Hello. 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 Uh, so, uh, we are here to stream. Other people, uh, should talk. Uh, hi. hi. <laughs> Should we uh, maybe do a roundtable introduction or something? Oh, like that? probably a good plan. Yeah. Probably Thanks everybody with... for joining us. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, good map. Go first. Uh, <laughs> Mainly because uh, you are the first tiny head on the row of tiny heads. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Uh. So, I am Bitmap Prager. Um, I make comics. I draw comics uh, uh, for until, you know, things got bad in the past few years. I was drawing web comics at theashenprincess.com. Now I'm drawing a comic with uh, these fine folk all, all over here uh, called Mountain. And it is about this little mouse who is having a great time. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that's me. Uh, I'm doing the art, and uh, Emily Emily's doing the words. Yep, that's true. Uh, I am I'm doing the words. Hello, um, I am Emily Emily Respeck. I am a writer. I write a lot of comic books, so including Mountain from Cowhouse Press, which is gonna be out uh, in a few months. I think is, is the goal. Uh, maybe I should have said that. And then the um, and it's going to be amazing, and it's really, really good. And I also wrote a book called "It's Your Funeral," which is out from Iron Circus Comics, uh, relatively recently with Bitmap Prager, uh, or not? No, that's you. Uh, with um, Ellen Ellen Kramer and Matt Coster. <laughs> and then I have a couple other books on the line. I'm on Twitter at Emily Respec, and my website is emilyrespec.com. But go to my Twitter because I was planning on updating my website this weekend. <laughs> so that's a future project. Can't wait to update websites. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> uh, I'm Sheka. I am the cow of Cow House Press. Um, super, super excited to be working on Mountain with Bitmap and Emily. If anyone's joining us for the first time and hearing about Mountain for the first time, we've got a work in progress blog that has interviews with both of them in there, how we do our edits, and as we get deeper into uh, the making of the book, it'll have a couple more as well, just like into the process of how all of this came together, why we love the pitch, what was in there. Um, as a publisher and an editor, what do I think about as we put all this together? Sneak peeks at cover design ideas that we've got. Um, so, yep. Oh my gosh, I'm just really excited about this project. I'm, ugh, I love it. I can't <laughs> wait to get it out there. It's all I think about and talk about, and I, I try really hard to only talk about it to people who won't spoil it, and I just <laughs> cannot wait to get it out there. I'm really excited. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will say personally that I, I feel like this is definitely the best thing I've worked on so far. I mean, look at Pilgrim. Look at her. She's so cute. <laughs> How could it not be? Extremely cute. Yeah. Right, and then Jen. Hello, my name is Jenna. Um, I am basically a bunch of memes and bad jokes, all wrapped up under human skin. And Shaka and I Except run for puns. together. Because I, okay, I own all the puns. She owns all the puns. Admittedly, yes, she owns all the puns. I hate them. But, you know, I love her enough that I deal with them. That's all that matters. And we share collectively one brain cell. And usually Sheikha um, has that brain cell most of the times. But we trade it back and forth. Brain cell, when she doesn't have that brain cell, I get the brain cell. So basically, she does everything, I do everything else. <laughs> We've also got our interns for fall here with us. Woo, interns! Also, I'm just going to say right now that none of this Twitch stream would be happening without the interns because I'm an old lady who knows nothing. <laughs> and so our intern, Sim, I was just like, I don't know, Sim, I want to do a Twitch stream, I guess. And they were like, cool, got it. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Sim, for... For working us through uh, all these Twitch problems and whatnot. Yes, thank you now so I'm gonna much. Hope. 
Hi. Hi. Thank you yeah. for following. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. All right. Your eyes so good. I can't see that. Oh, wait, there's a full screen option. There, yeah, no, you can full screen it. All right, so I'm going to get started on the art now. Uh, we're going to be doing inks today. Anyone has questions, uh, let me know. If the Twitch stream has a question, uh, one of y'all please uh, s speak it out because I'm going to be looking at a different screen. I got you, Bitmap. Don't worry. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who has decided to join us. We're very happy to have you. We're very excited. We're very excited about this project. I actually, Bitmap, you said that this was, um, you feel like you, you feel really good about the work you've done in this. And even though this is like a, a shorter comic for me, a shorter book, I actually do feel like it has been, it, it's been one of my more successful projects, I feel. Sometimes I think mm -hmm. like with, with any writing project, I suppose, like you, there is a certain amount of like a certain simplicity to a project can really kind of help bring out the best elements of it. I feel sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, and I think that's part of why I feel so good about Mountain is because compared to a lot of the books I've written, which are you know like three hundred, four hundred page graphic novels. Mountain being something shorter and incredibly self-contained and like purposely uh, simple is sort of um, I, I feel like because of that it's got this it's it's sort of just it is what it is and you know there's no bells no whistles it's just like a solid story and I really appreciate that as a writer at least. Yeah, I have to say that um, as as an editor, or at least as someone who is picking out projects to work on, sometimes I'll see pitches and I'll go to look at the creative portfolio or what else they've done. And I can definitely say that if someone only has long projects in their uh, in what they've done, like it does give me pause a little bit. I feel like it's easier to sort of go on forever on a project, add yet another page, have another episode of ER, yet another season of The Simpsons. And it's almost harder to come up with a concise short story that is fulfilling while leaving you wanting a little bit more. Which is well, something I think about Mountain. I think, I think you're right. And I think that's honestly kind of a, um, that's sort of a um, supplementary like benefit, I think, of there, there's been there was a lot of talk on Twitter recently about like advice for for um, for artists specifically for people who want to get into comics and one of the most oft repeated pieces of advice is is to start small and start with something like you know short, which um, for for at least for me uh, is a, is a serious case of do as I say not as I do because <laughs> the first thing the first thing I put out was you know the Blue Valkyrie which was a web comic that ended up. Um, going for five years. <laughs> I think uh, one of the most incredible things is that, you know, it, usually one of the reasons you tell people that is because, uh, yeah, it's like start with something short because you're not going to get that far in it. It's your first no. thing. And it's like, no, you actually got... Yeah, geez. Like, I've never had a project that I've been like, it's going to be a thousand pages actually get even close before. No. But but on the other hand, you know, doing something like that, taking on something shorter, it, not only is it going to give you something that you can finish in a reasonable amount of time, but it also when you when you're working on something shorter, you have like you, you can tell a less complex story, so that can that can make it a little easier. But also like you are severely limited by space, and in comics especially, space is something that is a constant constant worry and a constant consideration because mm. in a novel um you could just you could just add another page it's probably not going to make a difference like like i guess i wonder i don't think there's anybody out there who's like writing their novels so that there are a specific number of pages and specific things happen on specific pages if there is then i guess i'm behind the curve but i don't <laughs> think so i don't think anybody would ever do that <laughs> 
Yeah, I, I, I can say that all of my comics got dramatically better once I started thinking of every single, like, even if it was a longer thing, uh, every single chapter size thing is, here's a short story. By the end of it, it should feel like you got something. Oh, yeah, Ab- absolutely. I, I agree with you. Um, I, I think of chapters a lot that way as well uh, when I'm writing them. And, um, I mean, I think I think you're right. I think it does help a little bit. I am not a huge fan of the, um, of like, I, I don't really go for a lot of floppy comics anymore nowadays mm-hmm. um, for a number of reasons. But there is a, a, a I think there is, in in like doing them and, and at least from my perspective as a writer from writing them um which i've never i've never just to be clear i've never written floppy comics professionally but um but the blue valkyrie which was my web comic i sort of wrote it like it was a floppy almost because that's what i was trying to like i guess that that was my like angle for that which never happened and um and then it's your funeral which was the first graphic novel i put out that was actually originally pitched as a, a floppy series until Iron Circus picks it up as a graphic novel. So, like, it had that, like, DNA of a floppy series in it. Mm-hmm. But one thing you kind of do learn from, from doing that kind of work, which which is pretty severely limited on space, you know? Like, if, if like a DC comic or a Marvel comic has, like, something like 22 pages of art maximum every month. Yeah. And they have to make the most out of that. And... I think I personally am not a huge fan of those limitations uh, to, you know, to the books. Um, I think they're a little more frustrating than they are helpful. But working within limitations and working with a limitation like that, you it really does. You really can like you know get training on how to how to tell a story in 22 pages because you've got yeah. to do it. Yeah, being able to tell a story, being able to say at the end of 22 pages, you've got like something worthwhile, so right. useful. Something with a beginning, a middle, and an end. Cool. There we go. Uh, we got the panels all inked out, and now we can, uh, let's start with this one. This one's fun. By the way, someone earlier, um, Voyage Hour said this page has a really good layout. Just wanted to throw that out there. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, so that's actually a good way to highlight the editorial process we go through, because this page did not have a good layout originally. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, like, the fact that it, uh, goes, like, this is not actually originally how it went. Originally, it was, uh, this and then this, because there were four, the four panels were laid out, uh, flat. And it was not, it was only through the editing process that, uh, we got it to realize... Uh, we we worked together and realized, oh, they should angle down. They should see the fall. The fall should happen this way, and then they should get up this way. Then they can look up and uh, towards the uh, the flip. Uh, and that was a that was a good realization. That uh, if I was doing this on my own, I would never have thought to do. I would have just uh, made a page that was like, this is good enough. <laughs> The pack is large. I do. I love that. I think um, Bitmap, you did such a good job of depicting everything about Pilgrim's personality just in these first couple of panels right off the bat. Like, yes, this pack is bigger than this mouse, which is amazing. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, it, it is very much my... I'll say I, I really appreciate... Uh, I feel like doing research is a thing I often tell uh, other artists when they're like, I don't know how to make this thing look good. It's like, well, you should do research. And fortunately for this, I, as a child, did a lot of backpacking. So I just, you know, I was like, ah, yes, I know exactly how it feels to wear a backpack that is at least as large as you and weighs (laughs) half as much as you. (laughs) And she's wearing it wrong. Like, she can't wear it right because she's a mouse. It's impossible. <laughs> Wait, what would wearing it right look like? Uh, so if she was wearing it right, um, she would have, like, a... Basically, for the most part, it's correct uh, like this. Um, these should not go in 
uh, at all. Like, she's actually using the straps as her, like, uh, belt. She's just tied it to her belt. That's not what you do. The, uh, they should go like <laughs> this. Uh, and then there should be an additional strap right here that goes across. Uh, and then all the weight should be distributed so that it is uh, near your center of mass. Unfortunately, her center of mass is, like, here, near the ground. <laughs> so <laughs> that she just can't, and that, that's, you know, that's what it's all about, really. I love it. Voyage Hour said, could you tell guys tell us what inspired the story and design of the characters? Uh, well, as for the story design, or as for the story, um, what actually uh, what what had happened was that Bitmap Bit Bit and I have been have been friends for a while, um, or at least acquaintances um, through through the you know Chicago comic scene. We had been we had seen each other at cons a little bit, and we knew each other outside too. Although I can't quite remember uh, where we met. <laughs> uh, we met in we... person for the first time when, uh, my partner Robin was meeting y'all when she was doing editing for you. That's right. That sounds familiar. Yeah, it's um, all those connections, you know? Well, uh, Bitmap has a better memory than I. That's, that's the, the case. But, um, so anyway, we, we had, we, we've known each other for a number of years, and, um, I have, been a fan of bitmaps for a very very long time um and i think it was uh not was it last cake uh i said or the cake before no it was the last cake last it shouldn't have been but uh you know covid right 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 so the, on the, uh, the last time we were at we were both table like at cake um I just, I was like, hey, you know, like, I, I'm a big fan of yours, you know, we're friends and whatnot, we should do a comic together, and Bitmap said, okay, so then I was like, oh, no, now I have to, you know, write something, and um, I just kind of asked Bitmap, because I didn't have any ideas, this wasn't usually when I, you know, approach an artist for a, uh, for a book, it's because I have something specific in mind, um, you know, I've written this book, and I, I'm looking for an artist to help with the, uh, bring it to life as a graphic novel. Um, but with Bitmap, I didn't have anything, like, planned, so I said to, I just asked Bitmap, like, well, what do you like to draw? And, uh, can you remind me what you said, Bitmap? Uh, I believe it was something along the lines of, uh, I want it to be people traveling and, uh, talking with, like, a dramatic background was what I, what I said, uh, and, uh, yeah, something... Yeah, something that spoke louder through like the visuals, and also I was like, I'm I'm really feeling some Mobius right now. <laughs> so um, so I took that and I was like, okay, well, what's something that could be a simple story? I, well, I knew I wanted it to be like something simple and like pretty, uh, um, pretty like. Well, I, I said it already. I said simple because I had just finished working on um the first draft at least of a another graphic novel that I had been working on. And that one was really complex. Um, so I was like, I want to do something that's like different and like very, very, very like simple, very down to earth. And I kind of wanted to like test myself a little bit. So then I got to thinking like, well, what's an activity that like that two people could do with this impressive environment that could be a pretty simple story. And that's where I came up with, that's where I thought like, well, what if we did two people climbing a mountain together? Now it, it went, sideways from there because it's not really a you know it's not really a book about two people climbing a mountain even though that's what it is about it's about more than that but um it's about but, climbing a mountain it's not... about climbing a mountain yeah <laughs> but it's but it's um it was intended purposely to be a very simple story and uh and that then as for the characters when i was like okay well i want to tell this simple story and i also wanted to tell a quieter story because at the time i had noticed that I was utilizing dialogue a lot, and I felt like it was a, it was sort of a, um, it was sort of an, an inhibitor for me. Like I was relying too much on dialogue to get a story across uh, when it's a visual medium, which is a little understandable because I'm a writer and not an artist. I work with artists, and you see that a lot with with you know writers who are not artists of comic books. Writers tend to be um, a little wordier than artists tend to be <laughs> when it comes to comics because we think you know using words and not with 
you know, visual necessarily. Obviously, we think in visuals, but not as much as an artist would. Uh, so I wanted to challenge myself in that way too, which is why I decided, okay, well, what if it was a book where only where there were these two characters, but only one of them ever spoke? So we can cut down on the dialogue and really focus on the artwork. And um, that was that was uh, part of it there too. Um, from there, I I just had the thought of like. I thought it would be more fun to do like, you know, these alien creatures or these, you know, these these uh, non-human folks as opposed to doing humans. Um, I believe I had pitched um, for Pilgrim to be. Oh, and the characters are also unnamed in this, even in the script. Uh, that's another way. Like I wanted to do it specifically so that it was kept as simple as possible and like, you know, a little bit vague on purpose. Again, to challenge myself as a writer. Um, my original pitch for uh, Pilgrim was to be a bunny rabbit, uh, but uh, Bitmap suggested uh, a mouse instead, and I said, "Okay, mouse is uh, mouse is also good." Um, I think we I think we decided on a bug for climber. Uh, you can't see climber in this page. I think we decided on bug for climber pretty early too. Yeah, I think uh, climber being a bug was settled earlier. Uh, I I remember one of the things I was very insistent on is like they should have four arms. Because I've figured out how to draw four arms for Ashen Princess, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, a lot and, of fun. And, and if if my memory serves correct, Bitmap was like, well, they should have four arms, and I was like, okay, well, what's got four arms? A bug. So there you go, <laughs> Bing Bang Boom. And the rest is history. So it's a combination of like what we were interested in, plus like things that I wanted to do to challenge myself, and then things that were just either convenient or seemed cool. Yeah, then a lot of like a lot of the uh, details uh, of like okay, but what is this mountain and everything around that like developed as we went based on that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, a lot of the world building details are are things that came in like actually a lot of the world building details in this book are stuff that came in because of editing notes. Um, I I think it was. Uh, I've talked about this a little bit already on my Twitter, but um, because Cow House is such a small press, you know, with a couple people, and not you know not a billion not a billion books coming out every year, um, we have a very hands-on editing process. We meet every week to edit the book. We and we are we get really into like the minutia of everything, which is a big change from you know other experiences i've had even with major publishing houses and because and that's that's understandable because these you know these publishing houses while they obviously want my book and they're interested in them um they have you know 20 books to deal with and those books are 300 pages long so we don't have time to focus on every little thing so um but i i thought that this that the like hands-on editing has been extremely helpful for this book um I think it's made the book a lot richer. I think it has made the world building a lot stronger. And um, also, uh, I, 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 Jenna, forgive me. I believe you you have comics experience too. But I know Sheka, you do have comics experience. So having an editor who is like a comic maker as well, um, as opposed to you know just an editor, who I've had an amazing editor, of course. Um, but but having having an editor who is so proficient in in the craft of making comics as well, I think has has uh, has helped with that as well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely for sure. I mean, like, I think <clears throat> what's nice about having maybe just having someone who takes a second look at your work and also understanding the craft is that they have that insider knowledge about what about actually knowing what you're trying to do and what you're talking about when you're trying to make your work. Yeah. Exactly, and um, and I, I've I've sort of taken to Mountain as my a bit of a prestige project for me. Like I'm like the primary reason I like to do it so much is because I'm very dedicated to making it the best book I can. Which of course I'm dedicated to making all my books the best that they can be. But you know, like Mountain gets a little more care and attention because it's sort of it's sort of a it's just a more personal project for me. So. I think all these combinations have led to a really, I think, really fantastic book, a great package. The and then of course, then I mean, none of it is anything without you know Bitmap's phenomenal artwork, which 
has been phenomenal for years now. Thank you. Yeah, no, uh, I... Yeah, this has been, a. This has been, uh, really great. I've, I've learned a lot of very useful quirks about my own art through this, and I, one of the advantages of having uh, editing that, like, is by people who make comics is that uh, when we started, I was like, okay, so I'm usually going to, like, get really mad at the thing you say, and then I'm going to come back tomorrow and be like, I changed it, and it's the thing you said now. Uh, but uh, because... Shaky, you have, like, a uh, comic experience. Uh, I, most of the time I'm like, yeah, nope, that's... you. Not only did you say the thing I should do, you said it in the language, I understand. It's so funny, too, because when we... Way, way back when, what feels like years now, when we were first starting to talk about Mound, we hadn't done any work on it at all. Um, part of what I always do is ask creators, what's the best way to contact you? How do you like to communicate? Because I want to make it as easy as possible for you all. And I remember one of the things I asked was, how do you take feedback? <laughs> and you had said exactly that, um, that if you come across as defensive or um, if in any way it seems like a negative reaction, it's going to be okay. You'll come back to it and it'll, you know, you'll work through it. And I always try to keep that in mind. It's like, okay, anything I say, it's going to be fine. We'll just give, um, uh, make sure to give space and follow up later. But instead it's been the smoothest experience, which is wild. <laughs> and Bitmap's just so great at it. <laughs> that is true. Bitmap, somebody, someone's going to get you to make a, like a whole series of graphic novels set in just your own world where you get to pick every little detail, and it's going to be really great. Oh, uh, yeah. No, that'd be... I'm trying that'd to remember, insane. like, some of the, like, various comic pet peeves that we also had to sort through through the editorial process. Like, I believe mm -hmm. it was Emily who was like, I cannot do vertical panels ever or something like that. <laughs> okay, okay, let me explain. <laughs> I, explain yourself, Emily Respect. You are on trial. You know what? All right, you know, I'm ready to get acquitted because I'm ready to defend myself here. I find that a one very tall panel with two, very, two you know, medium panels stacked to the side of it horizontally, I find is a little awkward oftentimes. I know there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. My my supposition was maybe they're both kind of wrong because they both look <laughs> a little awkward at times. But I I completely acquiesce that I am like a weirdo when it comes to that. I I am not you know the norm. So uh, like I could I'm very well could be wrong. It's just a preference thing. But that being said, it is a preference thing that I will take to my grave. <laughs> And then someone on chat is going to like come at you with the tortures of pitchforks defending vertical, vertical panels. panels. Defending vertical <laughs> panels have rights. <laughs> you we have like three vertical panels in the entire book. So. Uh, we have, I'm, we probably have more than that. Yeah, we have plenty because eventually I, I did, eventually I just stopped uh, um, complaining about them because I was. <laughs> yeah, the. I, 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 I was gonna say because I wasn't getting my way, but that's a joke, obviously. <laughs> I'm perfectly happy about the moon. Actually, over the moon, really. Yeah, sometimes I, I feel like I'm gushing too much about you guys, but I truly do believe it. I'm, I'm very. <laughs> excited. Yeah, I I, uh, I started drawing comics because I like Calvin and Hobbes a lot, so I'm just I. The idea of like oh a standard panel layout. I'm like I don't know what a standard panel layout is. Grids are hard. Like, a nine-panel grid, that's, that's real hard. What? It's a lot easier to just make up something really weird. And there's, there's some really cool paneling in this book, too. We got some Watchmen stuff going on. Get ready. Got some Watchmen. <laughs> we got some Crazy Cat. Got some got Family Crazy Surface. Cat panels. Okay. Some of them I even helped with. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. I have, I have to say that my favorite part of the editorial meetings is whenever it's time for Emily to bust out the MS Paint. I love the MS Paint. Yeah. Oh my god. Sometimes, sometimes you've got us, though. You know, 
sometimes you, uh, it's hard to explain. And I know you you think I'm a writer. Maybe it should be my job to explain things using words. But perish the thought, for I could use MS Paint instead. <laughs> And instead, it's a glorious time of watching you doodle on MS Paint. It's great. <laughs> and it always looks really sharp, too. There we go. And okay. So, Fitmap, I actually have a question for you. Yeah, absolutely. I see your brush is like this weird, like, shape that looks like mutant text. Is there, a, a, like, is am I, do I just not understand Photoshop, or is there a reason for that? Uh, so I am a, f I am a fine arts person. Uh, I was trained in the fine arts because I wasn't allowed to go to illustration school. Uh, <laughs> so, um, I basically learned how to paint and use physical materials very intensely before I was, uh, before I had a chance to start working digitally. So I mimic brushes. I, I just mimic brushes uh, when I work uh, all of my this is my uh, usually my text brush but it allows for a little more fine details than uh, my other ones as well uh, another one of my brushes is uh, this which you can see is like a little wedge shape and that one allows for these like nice curves and has like a little bit of a a texture in it that gives the feeling that the page itself has a texture. Wow. Um, and then uh, the final brush, which is the one I do all my penciling with. Uh, there's more brushes, but the, these are the ones that matter. Um, is this one, and uh, it yeah, this is the one I use for pencils. Is when I do it soft, it's really soft. It like kind of fades away, and when I do it heavy, it gets like that, and it, it allows me to scribble, which is kind of how I do all of my pencil work, and the trick I learned about uh, how to successfully do um, ink work uh, way back when, how to make my ink work actually work, was to uh, find ways to have it mimic the feeling of my pencils without quite as many lines. So we have a question inside um, in chat. Uh -huh. Kawaii Ramen says, "Could you tell us how you organize your layers in Photoshop? They look so clean." Oh, Ooh, absolutely. I need this question. This so great. Uh, <laughs> this, so my uh, process is got a lot of bits to it. I've developed it over ten years now. Um, basically, uh, I have a base file. I never start flat. Uh, I never start by default. Everything is already like pre-built ahead of time. Uh, you can see like I've already got my palace. I've got my bleed zones laid out. If I do this, uh, you can see my my uh, markings for not only the bleed but how close a panel can be to the edge and how close uh, text and other important elements can be to the edge. Uh, I've I've even built in like the one fourth and one third uh, positions of everywhere, so I can just figure out what the basics of a layout will be without ahead of time. Um, and then if we go to like the outline, uh, you notice it's all blue lines. However, uh, if I just drag it above what I, a layer I call canvas blues, uh, it's brown. It, this is my default pencil color. It just, I have it so that the color changes when I drag it below that, so I don't need to, uh, mess around as much. I have a little bit of a gray layer um, in my pencil so that I can draw in white, uh, which is how you can see there's little highlights here. Uh, I have some perspective like stuff built in, but I usually don't need to use that because like, unless it's like really complicated perspective because uh, I can just see perspective. I, I know that's hard for some people, but it's, that's like one of the easiest things for me. Um, and then, like, just line-wise, uh, I've got my lines here. Uh, they're in a multiplied uh, folder. Above that, I have, white, I have a, a white clipping mask for my highlights so that I can just, whatever color I'm doing, it just automatically can let me do white highlights above it. Uh, my panels at the top, right below my bleed and palette. Uh, text layers, uh, if I was doing the text myself, are above all that, uh, but below the panels. 
And then uh, the colors, which we aren't going to get to today, are their whole own little thing, where I've got uh, my flat slayer, where I can do all the flats, and below that I have texture, uh, basically textures that I c I'm, I've built so I can paint with them. So it's like, oh, do I want a, uh, my, my dark color uh, to be stars? I can paint stars. Do I want a, kind of like a darker texture as my lower one? There we go. Uh, I want, do I want the city of Chicago in orange on the side? There's, there's that. And then uh, do I want something bright but not quite white? There's that. And I use these when I want uh, painted textures for my backgrounds. Uh, though in this book there probably won't be any of these. I'll probably be using flats and just actually painting everything. Um, yeah, uh, that's that's all that. Uh, and also everything has fun, cute names in it because like you develop all your own names for every weird thing you do uh, uh, after doing it a bit. I can't Daddy. relate to that because I call everything dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love Fooly Cooly, so my fur the, the 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 build base layer uh, that I start on in uh, my outline layers is called Never Knows Best. Perfect. Yeah. Map, this is extremely organized and and very impressively so, I must say. I find that being organized makes it like on a core level let's be me be messy everywhere else and you know it's hard enough to draw a lot of stuff so i just want to get as much already solved as possible ahead of time i like to be organized as well but um not to this level i don't i don't <laughs> i don't i don't i have no need to get that organized yeah well i mean you 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 organize your text way better than me this is my text organization Oh, good. Yeah, I, I don't, when I, see, the <laughs> thing about being visual is I don't write on paper from top to bottom, left to right. I just write in various spaces. All of my college uh, <laughs> sketchbooks start on either end, and once I get to the middle, I flip it, because I'm like, I don't want to draw at the back of a book. So they all are reversed once you get to the Wait. center. What? What are you talking? Wait, what? That makes so much sense that I have never thought about that before. What do you mean well, you don't you want to draw the back of the book? What's the difference? Uh, it. I like the the heavy part to be the part that I'm not trying to hold. I, I don't use sketchbooks anymore, but when I did, mm -hmm. it was like no. That's fair. I think I get you. But that makes so much sense, though. I've always been like, ugh, I want to buy a new sketchbook, even though I'm only three fourths of the way into one, because I hate that exact problem. If I had a time machine, the things <laughs> I would tell younger Shaka. <laughs> if you had a time machine, you would use it to go go tell yourself what to buy at Blick. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. <enough. laughs> I feel that too hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that just go and get those me. pens. Okay, but what about like stock information and whatnot? No, no sketchbooks. Listen, when I was at art school, um, I had just, I had trans- Oops. Somebody. Bye. <laughs> um, I had transferred out, but, um, they required all freshmen to get a $400 art kit, which Ooh. was a bunch of stuff, most of which I still have, because it's, like, paint and- the, What is the other thing? Oh my god, um, yeah. Bristol no. and a bunch of sketch paper. It's chilling at my dad's house. I'm a digital artist. What am I going to use a bunch of Bristol board for? <laughs> Gesso? What do I need that for? I feel like it's a natural instinct for artists. No matter what kind of artist you are, you could be working purely digital, but at every opportunity, you're going to hoard art supplies like it's no one's business. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have within reach and distance all of my old sketchbooks and boxes full of that. Uh, these supplies I still have. I don't have all my oil paints anymore, but... Because those, I, after a while, I just gave up on trying to move with them. It's like these are heavy, and I'm never gonna use them. I don't care how expensive <laughs> they were. But yeah, I recently gave my friend Ava uh, all of my brushes. As she also went to 
was in a college with me doing uh, art stuff and was like, oh, yeah, I'm getting back into all this, like, painting stuff. It's like, I have all my brushes. I will give you all of the nice brushes they got we got in, like, ho college. <coughs> I, I've i kept all of them, and I will never use them again. Well, that map of got good news. Lady <laughs> Ava said thank you for the supplies, by the way. You're welcome, Ava. <laughs> Bitmap, I'm so curious. Can you tell me about the transition, especially because your background, like you said, was in fine art. Tell me about the transition to digital. Uh, I wanted to do it so much earlier, but um, my my father was very against me being an artist. Uh, also, the uh, though our college had a room full of Cintiqs, um, the college had no idea what to do with them, uh, so they'd like get people to come in who would be like, oh... Well, uh, you're not usually going to have a Cintiq to do your uh, digital art on, so we're going to make you use the pen, the, the mouse for oh your no. art. Oh, no. Oh, no. Or just like the, the, uh, the main professors are like, I don't, I don't know if uh, digital art can do all the th same things physical art can do. And uh, that thing where I, I, I get stubborn and obstinate about art was very useful then because then I would just uh, prove them wrong every time I'd be like no my goal is to prove the art teacher wrong uh, and yeah it, it went over very well actually uh, even when I did a did the wrong assignment for an assignment I usually would do like at least a B on it because they'd be like well you did the wrong assignment but you did it really well so <laughs> that's also how I started webcomicking is I was like all right, I've proved that digital art is a real thing. Now give me an elective where I can just make a comic. So, so did you have an elective class for, like, making a webcomic? Not a – independent study, that's what it's called. I did four ah. years of independent study. Four years of independent study. Got what, was that um, – was, if, if, uh, was that the Catch a Dream Eater was that one? No, that was a comic called Basilwaki. Oh, I've never even heard of it. Yeah, uh, well, it was very popular back when I could put ads on MS Paint Adventures. Ah. <laughs> uh, I, I will tell you, it was full of bad memes, and but like in the only but bad memes in the way only a fine arts major can uh, put bad memes into a thing where it is questioning the nature of memes. Oh, <laughs> I see. That was me. You were using them ironically. It was an ironic. This is the thing. Everyone was like, oh, oh, Bitmap, you're, you're so ironic about things. And it's like, no, I'm extremely sincere. I love memes, but also I want to examine <laughs> the nature of memes. I mean, memes are good. You want to memes examine the nature of memes? And that's why my character, the Mod Slinger, uh, who moderated a physicalized internet, had to fight a missing now and some Poka fans. <laughs> now I've heard of the missing no comic, so so now you know I have heard of this comic because you've mentioned that before to me. Yeah, it's the thing where people are like, uh, when at first anyone sees me working on something new, they're like, "This looks so good." It's like, yeah, I know. Now, have you heard of my original comic though? That was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't relate because I've never made something bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Emily. <laughs> yeah. Classic Emily lying. <laughs> Emily, what's a project you've done that you can't let go of even though you should put it to rest? Similar um, to <laughs> you know, I have to say, I, I, I actually don't think I have that problem very much. It was, um, for a while, it was the Blue Valkyrie, which is a project that, I I, oh, I I hate to say this, but I it's true. I mean, I'm I'm I do feel pretty much like I'm like I'm done with that. That um I could I could keep going with it, but I just um I don't have the time anymore. You know, I mean mm -hmm. I I when I when I started the Blue Valkyrie, of course I was bright eyed and bushy tailed, and I thought what everybody thinks when they start their first little web comic or whatever, which is that this thing is gonna be super big and super huge. And all I have to do is work really hard on it, and it'll get there. All I but have to do is, is make three pages a week for five years. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is not the case. 
that it is not always the case that just because you work hard on something, it pays off. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, so so the Blue Valkyrie is my superhero web comic. Um, I, I think it is. I, I actually do think it's still pretty good. Um, or at, or at least there are parts of it that I think are very good. Um, it was a first effort. I think that's clear. I think if you go and read it, that becomes clear nowadays. But um, but I'm still pretty proud of it uh, for the reasons that one, I think for a first book, it's pretty darn good, and two, because I I work on it with my friend um, with my friend David, who is who is really lovely and has just been such a fun like collaborative partner all these years. And um, you know, obviously I owe I in, in a way I kind of owe everything to him because uh, I wouldn't that was my first you know that was the first thing I ever put out, and it was with him. So if I hadn't done that, who knows if I would be doing this right now. Um, mm. Uh, where was I? But yeah, I, I think it's okay, but I think it is, it's probably going to bed, you know, I may, who knows, like, uh, three months from now, I may find myself with a wealth of time and be like, I really want my, my weird trans superhero comic again, because um, cause there's some stuff I never got to that I thought was pretty awesome, and we kind of stopped doing it at a chapter where <laughs> where something was going to happen that I was like, had planned from the very beginning, so it seems silly to stop now, but again, I don't have a lot of time anymore, <laughs> so. Um, so there's that. Um, I also had been developing last year, actually right about the same time I was working on the first draft of Mountain, I was working on another book. Uh, uh, it was another superhero book, actually, that I had intended to pitch uh, as a floppy series, and the reason I had done that was because I was... Um, at the time that I had written it, I was looking for an agent, um, which I ended up finding. Ooh, ooh, I'm represented by Claire Draper, so if you want to work with me, you can contact them. Um, but uh, at the time, I was looking for an agent, and I had finished a graphic novel script that I was pitching to two agencies with, and I had also um, finished like the, like what I had thought was a follow-up to that, uh, the, the follow-up graphic novel script. So I was looking for smaller things, and that's when Mountain came up. And also, after Mountain, I was like, well, I got some time now, and I don't have any projects going on. And I was like, well, this agent search is taking me a really long time. And once I get an agent, we're going to have to pitch to publishers, and that's going to take a really long time. So maybe I'll just write, like, a floppy series or something, uh, <laughs> which, which would be something that would be smaller and a smaller commitment than a huge graphic novel. And something I could work on, you know, while I'm looking for an agent and while I'm like publishing books and just some, so I can keep my name out there, so I can keep all this. And I ended up writing a first um, chapter or first, you know, first floppy issue of that. I, we had we made pitch pages for it. I designed the entire pitch packet, and I never sent it out. <laughs> um, which is, I think, okay. I, I was working with uh, some really, really talented artists on that. Um, but they they also had their own thing going on, and um, we had kind of just it, it kind of fell in by the wayside by the by the time I decided to just abandon it entirely. Um, I had fallen out of love with the project, and also I had you know too many other things going. I like like my work had picked up since I started on it, so I didn't have time anymore. Um, so I think that one was is probably like the biggest the biggest swing and a miss I've creatively that I've had except if you count like crap from when I was like 16 which I don't <laughs> <laughs> because those I didn't actually do a lot of work on those it was going to be a superhero series actually another one um, it was going to be about a uh, young young person who uh, gets like attacked by a space monster and um mutated into like a space monster character and then um uh they were going to be like they were gonna have to team up with villains because all the superheroes were like oh we gotta stop this monster and they were like oh, i'm not a monster and also this is pretty radical actually because i really wanted to write my story and my kind of story is the one where i get mutated into a space monster and then i live the rest yeah. of my life very very happily and then you all <laughs> can just deal with it so it was really just like a self-insert. <laughs> what, what if I were Kerrigan from StarCraft in real life? Yes. Nice. Awesome. You're valid. 
thank you. Thank you. I will I will just say really quick, in case anyone from Blizzard Entertainment is watching, I do not really particularly want to work for Blizzard Entertainment, but I do think you should let me write a Kerrigan book because I do think that I understand that character on a very personal level. And I think that's clear. Well, if you read my books, I think it'll become clear to you that I'm the right person to take charge of that. <laughs> This is your. Pitch, I I would be much more interested in your version of Kerrigan. If 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 listen, if I get to do pitches, then then I could also write a I I should also write a Warhammer graphic novel. I will do a very good job. It will be based on. <laughs> I I actually refuse to tell my pitch for this book because, on the off chance that someone from Games Workshop ever actually approaches me with it, I want to be ready. <laughs> It would be a Skaven based comic though. Skaven of the rat people. <laughs> I really like Warhammer. Love a rat person. We love a rat person. <laughs> Speaking of rats, how's that rat oh, podcast ooh. happening, Shaka? <laughs> Shaka, how is how is what, the rat Jenna? Your your rat cast. What? Your rat cast? Your Give rat, us a rat cast. Oh, okay. Give us a rat cast. Give us a I thought it was rat watch. Rat watch. Rat watch. Rat watch. <laughs> Someone's telling you me to shut up and cast. Oh, this is why you do not work with your friends, everybody. <laughs> why? Because we know all of the all of the secrets, all of the <laughs> details. Oh, the deepest, oh, darkest yeah, secrets that are rat, rat watch. <laughs> I have my you finger on the pulse of all rat watch. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Jammer, shut up, Jenna. <laughs> Can it be the Robocop theme, but with Rat Watch? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rat Watch was a very short-lived and ill-fated podcast. Why is it ill-fated? Because it's cursed. <laughs> <laughs> that um, Charlotte and I, Voyage Hour. <laughs> Uh, used to have that started because we would sit on my balcony oh, this is in the old apartment. It is Charlotte. I am. Um, I do want to bring it. I very badly want to bring it. <laughs> but we would sit on my balcony and watch for rats in the alley, which here in Chicago, there are always rats. There are just tons of them. And we would just count the rats and talk <laughs> about rats and things. And we came up with this whole lore about rats. But anyway, Emily's our number one fan. And... <laughs> True, I like Rat Watch. <laughs> I'm a big fan of rat lore. I want to know the deep lore of the rats. Just I gotta say, there are more rats here, but they're not as large as New York rats. Ugh, this is, we when we were in New York, we did see a bunch of rats, and we made a um, we made little rat puppets that we took around the city. <laughs> rat puppets huh? of us specifically that we okay. took around the city. <laughs> yes. Hold on, let me. Someone sees, sees your rat puppets and it's like, hey, what the fuck is wrong with you? Oh, whoops, that's the one swear. Sorry. I, I used it. Now, now, if you do another one, we can't be PG-13, Bitmap. Damn it. Now. Well. <laughs> Bitmap. Right after. You know, uh, every time I go to con and there's like a, hey, do you want one of those little balloons or one of those signs that says you're kid-friendly? It's like, I wish I could. Kids love looking at my stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I I have the exact same problem, and it is it gets worse every because I I do I do can admittedly have a little bit of a potty mouth, um, which gets worse every year, and uh, and it's it's really really bad because now like at least before like I wrote I wrote books that kids could read. Now I write books for children, so like <laughs> like, like they go I, I I pitch my books as young adults. So like I am not supposed to. I try to. This is actually I actually do try to keep uh, my swearing to a minimum on my Twitter because of that. Not not that I think I think kids can handle swears, but you know. Yeah, I I would definitely yeah no for sure. Uh, I would describe the work, a lot of the comics I've done in the past few years as things that I want kids to read, but their parents won't let them. Oh, that's mm. beautiful. I love that. That's real good. You, so have, you. To, you have to hide it in, in the approved stuff. Yeah, it's like, listen, if your parent is, like, not too attentive and they're just, like, they see the thing you're looking at, it's like, yeah, okay, sure. And they, they're not looking inside uh, and being like, oh. Oh, there's a lot of Antifa stuff in here, huh? 
<laughs> oh, there's some, uh, there's some, there's some language, huh? Well, I mean, but to be fair, like, there's a lot of Antifa stuff in Power Rangers too. Yeah, you know? that's a good point. And you know, Adult Swim, you know. Y'all remember that meme that was like just it just showed like fictional characters and labeled them Antifa because they are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Katniss Everdeen or like the Power Rangers or Captain America. Yes, believe it or not, anti fascism is kind of a good good trait to have, I feel as if. Hell yeah. I mean I mean like it's it's <laughs> or like Luke Skywalker was an anti was Antifa. <laughs> Like, because even, even uh, like, disregarding the fact that it's, you know, a good opinion, a a good thing to do and a good opinion to hold, like, um, authoritarian, authoritarian, you know, characters or, or, or organizations make good enemies. And and they do. They make good, you know, uh, things to fight against for our, for our heroes who we like because they're not (laughs) authoritarian. (laughs) <laughs> I'll say Why? that uh, one of my favorite things about playing Crusader Kings 3 is that it has taught me exactly how uh, it is like it teaches you how terrible rich people become terrible rich people with from the best intentions a few generations ago by having you do it and that's, that's just been like a wow I had such high hopes for this empire, but the moment it became an empire, all of a sudden, it was not a ten- it was not tenable anymore to be a good person. It's it's tough. I never played Crusader Kings three. I did play Crusader Kings two though, and my favorite thing was not being a good person. <laughs> I, I will say I spent most of the time being a bad person. <laughs> but I've been trying to figure out how to be a good one, and it's hard. You know, Sheikha, uh, I actually have a, um, I have a, 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 a podcast pitch that is sort of like Rat Watch. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, this is a, we never did this, but me and my partner, uh, Angie, we had talked about, um, we used to, uh, back before we lived together, uh, I would visit her most weekends. And, you know, we would, we would when we were settling down to sleep, um, we would just sit in her bed, you know, and chat for a while. And we would always chat about the most, like, inane, inane things. And one of the things we used to chat about was we got to talking about how we should do a podcast where we record the inane things we talk about while we're falling asleep. And we could call it Pillow Talk, which I still think is a pretty good name. It is. (laughs) That's very good. <laughs> the pitch for the podcast was going to be like the stuff you talk about when you're falling asleep and you don't have your phone so you can't Google anything. <laughs> that was beautiful. Yeah. Because if you're looking yes. at your phone in bed, you're not really trying to get to sleep, are you? This is true. Right. <laughs> we all do it, but let's be honest. That's fantastic and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We never ended up doing it, but, uh, I think it would have been an amazing podcast that had two billion listeners. <laughs> is let's start a now? podcast this era is like let's start a band, a garage band, or like let's start a a it's bar. The, yeah. Sort of. It's this. It's this generation's. Let's start a band named Tumblr. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Good lord. Yeah. I, oh yeah. For sure. Listen. Who 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 among us hasn't had a podcast? I mean, fair enough. <laughs> I've, you know, I I wish. I, I had so a podcasting hard. class. Ooh, they have podcasting go. classes now? What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make like two episodes for it. It's called uh, Foodies and Follies. It's a podcast about food. Ooh, huh. okay. It was, it was very fun. Good start. Uh, <laughs> we, very good start. <laughs> We talked about um, how the Oreo is neither is confirmed to be neither black or brown. <laughs> yeah, Dan was part of it. Lizard Man Dan. Uh, wait, it was, wait, wait, wait. I, I need I need additional information. <laughs> what are you talking about? An Oreo is neither black nor brown. Okay, so on the web, so as as per for the the podcast, each person had to come 
um, with a type of food that they wanted to talk about. We talk about it for maybe like five or ten minutes. And then we do a quiz at the end, like a three part, um, three question quiz. So I did, I think I did the Oreo, and I was like, okay, so what's an um, what color is an Oreo, black or brown? And then they were like, black, like brown. And on the official FAQ website of Oreo.com, it says that it is neither black or brown. What? And that it is up to the person to decide what? that. And my I, friend Dan uh, said, yes. so it's a cop-out answer. And I said, basically! I, I love, I love, 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 love when giant corporations pull that nonsense. Like, like they try to be like, like, oh, we'll, we'll, we like to leave it up to your interpretation of what this means. No! I want to know! Oh yeah, we also talked about M&M's, um, and as Dan said, the green M&M is green because green makes people think of sexy things! Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why she's green and she's pretty! Why? I, when the... What? Why? <laughs> Is, it's on YouTube if you want to listen to it. Is green really a... Okay, sure. What? You know what? I, I agree that like Frankenstein, like green, Frankenstein, yeah. I guess, makes people think of hey. sexy things. guess green's the horny color now. That's... <laughs> green was associated, like, back in the day as a, um, as, like, like a color for, like, sultry people. Is so that what green? Green? I guess like it's the seductress. Um, you wear like an emerald yeah. dress or something. I guess. <laughs> Is that why witches are green? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like the wicked oh, witch of the west. To be sexy? <laughs> Just yeah. tempting oh, you with her like her like little monkeys and you know. Oh my gosh! I just watched the Wizard of Oz from our film appreciation homework the other day. It's she's sexy. That's why she's green. Obviously. Yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. I wrote in my paper at the beginning. I wrote that um that Dorothy gets isekai into the world of Oz, and I left it in. <laughs> and my friend was like, "Leave it in. We like, go big or go home." And I did it. I got a hundred. <laughs> Woohoo! You know, uh. Not the monkeys. <laughs> Makes sense. The green giant mascot makes me feel things. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, <laughs> you are a delight, and I miss you. <laughs> oh, I'm just uh, dropping a link here, if anyone was curious about this, but this is the thread where Rat Watch goes to New York. <laughs> Rat, Ra <laughs> Rat Watch takes New oh York. Oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah, you little, little <laughs> oh. Finger popping. Charlotte, are you doing the hand thing where you're trying to strangle me in the air? <laughs> buckle, the home buckle dance. Oh, oh man. this is beautiful. You know what? I, Shika, I remember reading this thread. To be honest with you, like I genuinely <laughs> do remember when it when you. The were... really sweet. The birth yeah, place there we go. Look at that. Oh, that looks so good, Bitmap. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. I'm gonna leave the the feet undrawn for this because the feet are gonna like take me a bunch of tries, and I'll move on to another one in a sec. Don't want to embarrass yourself. I understand. Oh, it's just you know the foot. The foot. She's got weird feet. Uh, sure it, if it was a human foot, honestly, that'd be easier because I did so many classes learning how to draw feet. It's the thing. You gotta practice feet. Uh, it turns out. Feet and hands. It sounds like a joke, but no. <laughs> uh, you, you gotta learn how to draw feet and hands. <laughs> I am I am so excited to see these col the colors start to come in on this as well. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Yeah, oh. we should. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bitmap, your sense of color is so great. I also just want to see you setting up colors, and I'm just curious to hear about your color process. That's gonna be fun. For sure. Spoiler alert, I just made this. Uh, as Cowhouse Press decision maker, I made this Twitch stream happen just because I wanted to watch Bitmap draw. <laughs> the power! <laughs> okay. Here we go. Uh, no, let's make it a little bigger. Okay. Or is this. This is. 
and then uh, there's a wa, there's a wump, there's a kasha. Oh, the kasha. Yeah. Are we are we are we settled on kasha? I think so. Kasha <laughs> feels like the right sound for for that. Okay, here's a poll for everybody, I guess. Imagine the sound of someone putting out a campfire. What does that sound like? Like by kicking, kicking it. Kicking it. Yeah, kicking yeah, a, kick kicking a fire Cause, out. Because right now we have. <laughs> the problem was they originally were all. <laughs> yeah, we didn't want it to be. But but I was thinking about this the other day, or rather, <laughs> Lizard Man Dan says. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> like that's we're the thing. <laughs> we're we're at the this doing sounds part of the uh, live stream. I see. <laughs> <laughs> um, but 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 I was I was reading about you know that that post the blog post and I got to and my first thought was just are we sure about Pish or Kasha, <laughs> which is uh but I should probably stop like you know there's at a certain point you have to stop and say no the, the I mean <laughs> I will say changing the sound effects at the last minute is the easiest thing to do. Well I know but like if we. <laughs> Look, if we're going to, like, second-guess every single decision, including the Kasha, then we're going to – it's never going to happen. So we just got to live with what we got. Okay, have – let me pause it. Like, a multiple sort of, like, you know, kicking sand over a fire versus one large kick. Hmm. That would be too many letters, I think. <laughs> Well, get, I think sorry, that would Jason, that would clutter up the panel. Too many letters. <laughs> too many dang letters. I see. I, you know what? You know what? Kasha. I'm not. I actually like Kasha. I'm still on Team Kasha. Because <laughs> it's quick. It's come full circle. Yeah. And thank God I have the pop filter up, so when I say Kasha, you guys don't hear the plus. Mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Because you've got that good, good setup. Exactly. I also am team. Well, okay, I'm mostly team Kasha. Ah, yes. <laughs> exactly what you want you to hear from your editor on a live stream. I'm most team. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but like if it was me, everything would just move. Oh, it would be it would be an animated. Yeah. Oh, team that would be cool though. Oh. An animated feature length movie of mountain. Ugh. It, if it if it was me, it. just if it was just up to me, I would make the sound effect be kick. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, kick. <laughs> just kick. Kick. I feel like kick. that's something that Pilgrim kick. would do. Like a little kick. Oh yeah. Pilgrim would think that as yeah, she picks. Sound effect. <laughs> I'd be like, listen, we're busy. We got places to be. <laughs> you can figure it out. The, the sound effects just say, look at the next panel. <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects are like, look at the lower panel. Look to the right. Now turn the page. Someone chewing. Ooh. Coming up with sound effects is like truly the wild west of my writing. Like there is no... Like when it comes to like writing sound effects into the script, I do not use rhyme. I do not use reason. I just go with my gut every single time. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't, but that's what I do. Once I realized that so far. Uh, sound effects were totally different, they were totally different standard sound effects when I watched uh, anime or ma read manga. Like as a teen, it like just opened my eyes to be like, oh wow. You can do so many things. Does yeah, a bat go... One. What sound does a bat make when it hits a thing? Does it go crack? Does it go caking? What do you... What is it... What's it sound I think like? it goes caking. Wait, why would a bat go caking? Well, it's made of metal. Uh, uh, oh, 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 oh. You mean, you you mean like a baseball bat? An a baseball yeah. bat, yes. I was imagining a bat Listen, flying in the air. <laughs> I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm from a baseball town, so obviously a bat is always a baseball bat. I suck your blood, cooking. <laughs> I suck your blood. I suck your blood, cooking. I hate that. I don't <laughs> like that. I don't like I would actually... I know I was just against the um, like word as onomatopoeia, but I think for an aluminum bat, I would go like ping, 
<laughs> yeah, that's another one. Uh... It makes sense, yeah. I'm a fan of Kathump. Kathump is good. Kathump. Oh, see, here we have Russell. Just Russell. Yeah, that's my, this. I, I I don't know if you wrote that or I wrote this one. This seems like a me one personally. <laughs> I I feel like I'm I'm thinking back on the script and I I I expect that I wrote something like like Kashaka Shaka or something. I don't know. Kashaka Shaka. That's, I, that's I possible. To, I try to avoid <laughs> like word as on Montia as much as possible. The that's best sound effects, Spider-Man. <laughs> Thrill is a really it, it, Thrill is a really good one. You know, I, I credit where it's due. Marvel has some some solid like <laughs> iconic sound effects. The thwip and the the snick. Oh, the like. snick! Oh, the snick is so good. Snickety. I love a good snick. Yeah, just some solid um solid and unique sound effects. Yeah. yeah, I I I well, I think the thing I decided was like because I read a lot of One Piece uh, in college was that. The most important thing about a sound effect is what it looks like. Yeah, I, I've uh, I've heard that others are gonna say the same thing. Yeah, like the what a sound effect looks like has actually more effect on than what it says, as long as you understand what it means. Mm -hmm. One last. And that, that's why you effect? can just make up any sound, and as long as it uh, goes in the place you put it. Uh, uh, like, there's different rules, I'm sure, for, like, writing uh, novels, but in comic, it's just like, yeah, if the word works uh, specifically when you draw it, you're good. I try not to use, like, sound... I, I try to use sound effects pretty sparingly when I'm writing a novel. Uh, one last thought on sound effects. I love a wump. Wump's good. Mm, wump, wump's a good wump's one. Good. It's so versatile. You can get so much work done out of a wump. 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 But womp could also be like a trombone sound, a womp womp. Yeah, womp, it's a womp. But what's new, Pussycat? I would have it be an O instead of a U. You've uh, you've clued into something here, though, because the reason this is a womp here and not a thud is because this is Pilgrim falling, and Pilgrim is a little goof. Pilgrim <laughs> is a little goof, so, also so a little floof. The womp tells you you shouldn't respect her. <laughs> <laughs> But you will earn your respect in the course of the book. You should have respect. Her. No, you should absolutely respect Pilgrim. If anyone doesn't respect Pilgrim, I will find you. Go to your house. <laughs> I will knock and wear a mask. And I will wear a mask. Yeah, I will knock. I and I will leave my complaints on the doorstep and then text you saying that I am here from the doorstep. <laughs> and then. So I appreciate with this mid-falling pilgrim. This is a very good mid-falling pilgrim. Yeah, thing. this is the 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 next thing I want to draw today. It's just like that. This was a shockingly hard thing to reference. I had to find so many pictures of people mid-fall, which you would be shocked at how hard it is to find mid-fall photos. Is it's, it because they don't exist? Or? No, they do. It's just someone had to. It's often that turns out when. When you want to get a picture of what does someone look like when they're falling, instead of like uh, being like, here's a picture of someone mid-fall, it's, here's a picture of someone holding a position that looks like they're about to fall. And it's like, no, I need to get pictures of people falling off down the stairs. Can you look, look at a video? Uh, a video would have been a better idea, but uh, <laughs> instead I... Yeah. Too late for that! <laughs> Listen, uh... There are more efficient ways to get images than just Google search until your your search terms come up with the thing you want. But I've gotten Fair really enough. good at that one, so. I when I can't. Forget. Yeah, it's. I also appreciate this very prolonged womp. Or wah. <laughs> wah. <laughs> Just as a heads up to everyone, we're going to wrap up at 8.30, so just in a few more minutes. Oh. We will be doing another stream sometime in the future for color. So when Bitmap goes into um, color all these pages, we'll most likely stick with the same one, but we'll see where that goes. And to see the rest of progress on Mountain, follow our blog. We've got all of our links down there in places. I don't know where things are. 
Hello. <laughs> yeah. Where are things? Well, there you go. This is going oh, wow. to be exceptionally good. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> this is what interns are for. Ugh, interns are great, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Wow, wow. 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 Uh, may I wow. make a suggestion? Of course you can. That well, that middle W into it just another A, so it's just like, wah. Okay. I think that... That's, That's fine. Yeah, no, I wah think wah. this is... Wah-wah. Wah-wah. <clears throat> there we go. Wah-wah-wah. <laughs> wah-wah? Wah-wah. 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 We really are prone to just making mouth sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is, it, it, we, we have uh, 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 we have just reached the zenith where uh, oh it's pretty good that we're probably ending in a minute. <laughs> Mouse <Mouth> sounds <laughs> like the <laughs> live stream. Wah, wah, wah. Wow. How do we get things done? I How love do we get things done? Sound, so. <laughs> this is a good yeah. Sometimes you gotta if you're doing if you're doing sound effects sometimes <laughs> gadgets make sounds and also making sounds is fun and. Good. When you need to get a good expression on a character, sometimes you just make the expression. And by sometimes, I mean all the time. Mm -hmm. Every time. Yeah, just mm -hmm. every time. <laughs> Pilgrim is so cute. Pilgrim is very cute. Ugh. Yeah. Well, y'all want to see this mouse climb a mountain with a friend. Just, just look at her. It's not going to go great, but... <laughs> <laughs> like, but that's but that's why the book is exciting. <laughs> Still within the first few pages. Woo! Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks, Bitmap. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, interns, for hanging out with us. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for setting this up and everybody for uh, popping on the stream. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank Health you. Crowd for mouse sounds ASMR. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> wow! 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 Twitter. Wow. Wow. Insta. Kasha. Follow. <coughs> Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. I am leaving. <laughs> All right. I am Bye. leaving. That's the line of the Jenna. Bye. Bye. <laughs> See everyone later. Are we still alive? Shh.